Hello chess friends and welcome to Out of Chess Channel and welcome back to the TCEC Cup Finals in 2021. We have reached now the finals and of course as expected we have now the most brutal of any finals that can happen. We have now the super final between these two top engines Lila C0 and Stockfish. So these finals we have watched many many times in uh, cup uh, finals in TC, other TCEC events in computer chess championships and I think so far we have really a beautiful beautiful tournament but there was I think a huge huge problem when it comes to the super final in my opinion the super final should not be set up only in four games so this engines had to play only four games in such a prestigious tournament in such a prestigious event like the super final i think um the organizer should have let the engine simply play for at least 10 20 games in order to see which is which engine is really really better because in only four games and maybe if one engine maybe doesn't like an opening like this it's not so good then if you lose one game then the super event is over so as i said four games is simply not enough in my opinion to show who is really the best engine now in this world so uh let's check out now now the game four uh the first three games ended in a draw so in the game three really wild things happened these engines had to play a really wild uh uh, King's Indian line and in which Stockfish managed to get the draw out of this opening now it was time also for Lila C0 to maybe get the draw and force additional game so let's check out now what happened as it was really really a beautiful beautiful chess game so here d4 uh, played by Stockfish we have knight to f6 c4 after move g6 we have knight to f3 we have bishop to g7 so far the King's Indian and after move uh, g3 we have now the so-called Fianchetto variation also many times it uh, transposes into card spot structures so here after move casting we have now bishop to g2 both uh, engines have of course now this very powerful fianchetto bishops uh, here of course the light for bishop is aiming towards the queen side also the dark for bishop is very very dangerous towards the queen side so here the continuation we have the normal king's indian move d6 uh, with ideas to play knight to d7 or and then of course break the position either with c5 or with e5 because after knight to uh, casting uh, knight to d7 knight to c3 and we have now e5 you see e4 was also still the pre-arranged line by the organizer we have now a very powerful central control when it comes to uh white positional understanding when it comes to black's ideas of course we want to break the pawn chain we want to create maybe some weaknesses especially on dark squares because uh, white is already challenged now in the center of the board so now uh white is forced to basically uh show his cards what's going on in the center and here in the continuation after move uh, e4 c6 was played by uh lila c0 still pre-arranged h3 and now after move queen to b6 the pre-arranged line was really a wild line now it's the move c5 and okay c5 leads now into a really wild game as the pawn structure will get asymmetrical uh that's the main issue the game will really explode in the center of the board and it's actually a gambit line in which here uh, after d takes c5 a white recaptures towards the king side we have now d takes e5 and now the knight has to move and now comes to move e6 so that was now the pre-arranged line it's a gambit line which of course creates further weaknesses in black's camp that's the main goal there are many great games uh also uh, for instance i see here a great game played by gary kasparov in this particular line so as i said after move e6 black is basically forced to take the pawn f takes e6 but now after move knight to g5 white has a dominant position white has an attacking position white is now really the attacker in the continuation of the game and black is the defender with upper pawn so that's now the beauty of this game but as i said uh, maybe lila c0 is not feeling well in maybe this types of structures in this type of, of dynamic game so that's why as i said four games only in the super finals should not be enough in order to decide really uh which engine is simply the better because it's really a wild king's indian game in which of course stockfish a great tactician feels very very comfortable so after move knight to g5 uh knight to e5 uh here played by Lila c0 we have now f4 and now knight to f7 of course challenging this very important knight here on g5 because the knight on g5 is very annoying it creates of course uh some attacks on the other side of the board so whenever you feel pressured by one particular piece then you want to get rid of the piece but maybe here also an opportunity uh, could have been here for lila c0 to play the move c4 discover attack against the king then of course after king to h2 maybe knight to d3 but it leads still into a complicated game and white is much much better i think even in this position because uh, you can maybe here try e5 and even if black takes 
the pawn on b2 it's not a problem because you will simply play queen to g4 and uh, you have to now get back with your knight you have to play something like knight to d3 but now you see with this ideas h4 h5 bishop to uh, e4 and similar ideas i think white has really a brilliant brilliant position even knight to e4 here uh, can be played so i think white will include many pieces into the attack the rook is on a very active square we don't care basically for this bishop if black wants to take out this bishop uh, then he should take it because our bishop here on c1 is uh, blocked out by the f4 pawn anyway so that's how you evaluate your pieces when you're on the attacking side which is piece is good which piece uh, can be maybe improved which piece cannot be improved and i think that this bishop cannot really be improved towards the king side maybe you could try something like bishop to a3 but uh, then of course c5 will happen and uh, of course uh, the rook is still protected but as i said it's i think the most important thing is maybe here to occupy the f6 square play something like queen to h4 uh, maybe even as i said bishop to e4 and similar ideas so i think here white is much much better but uh, after move f4 uh, c4 wasn't played here by lila c0 in the continuation lila played knight to f7 here we we have knight takes f7 and now a great move by lila c0 bishop to d4 at least this counter attack because if you play immediately rook takes f7 then e5 and then this bishop will never be able to get out in the game and uh, you see it will be simply paralyzed through the whole game now knight to e4 knight to d6 are of course great opportunities maybe bishop to e3 knight to uh, a4 attacking also uh, the c5 weakness so this would be sort of now now attacking idea here for white so as i said great intermezzo move by uh, lila c0 bishop to d4 we have king to h2 we have finally rook takes f7 and now e5 locking again the dark squares because because many times in King's Indian structures, uh, this Fianchetto bishop on g7 is a great attacking piece towards uh, the queen side, but it's also very important to have your bishop in front of the king as it is now, it would be now a good defensive piece in front of the king, but we have seen now the problems if the bishop would have been locked here with the move e5, so at least it's attacking something now, uh, this bishop on, in the center of the board. And the cool part about this bishop is that it cannot be attacked by some pawns, so there is no opportunity anymore for white to attack this bishop with the pawn, so at at least this bishop uh, can be only maybe kicked uh, kicked away a bit with the minor piece maybe with some ideas like knight to e2 so uh, here in the continuation we have queen to c7 knight to e4 uh, we have now b6 and now knight to g5 attacking the rook rook to f8 and now queen to c2 simply developing the queen and we're trying now maybe to find finally search for opportunities for this bishop we have to notice i think that this bishop on c1 is simply the worst minor piece of whites on the other hand the worst minor piece of blacks is of course the bishop on c8 as it is really blocked out by its own pawn structure so maybe black could search here sort of a path to play bishop to a6 if possible bishop to c4 and then uh, here bishop to d5 in order maybe to centralize the position further that would be sort of a path how to improve uh, really a minor piece but there is i think also a huge huge problem here in black's position ideas like bishop to e4 and then h4 h5 could work to really undermine here uh, this pawn chain to really break and enter here there are simply only two pawns in front of uh, in front of uh, black's king so now i think with bishop to e4 and even some sacrificing ideas uh, black could face really really many tactical problems so uh, if you try here something like bishop to d7 maybe to protect both of these pawns these are now the main weaknesses you see bishop to e4 and i wanted to show you what could happen actually if you play really bad move like knight to g7 of course lila c zero top engine would not play this move but i wanted to show you uh, maybe in 10 15 uh, 15 moves maybe in five moves this could be a tactical possibility because after bishop take g6 h6 g6 and you see now queen to g6 and uh, black is simply tactical loss we can even play g4 f5 opening position queen to h7 threatens immediate checkmate with f5 we could maybe even uh, include also our dark square bishop into the game so as i said this is something that bothers now black in the continuation of the game so after move queen to c7 um Lila C0 realized these problems and played simply queen to e7, played towards the king side further because uh, Lila C0 probably realized that it needs further protection, that the uh, queen should be closer to the king. But now, of course, this pawn is hanging, but it's not such an important pawn as it was a weakness through the whole game. So at least you took the pawn out now, or at least uh, black is not feeling uh, so much pressure now in the continuation of the game. So rook to b8, we have a rook to uh, d1, knight to c7, and now queen to 
to g2 we have now rook to d8 and now bishop to f3 regrouping here bishop to a6 was played by um by lila c0 maybe a better idea would have been here to move knight to d5 uh, i like this idea knight to d5 because you don't want to give up of course your um, your uh, your light like bishop like this like powerful bishop uh, for the centralized knight uh, but of course h4 i think is an opportunity maybe to create further madness again with this idea of bishop to e4 so there are many many tactical lines here for white i think so as i said uh, it's really a complicated position so uh, here in the continuation after move bishop to f3 we have bishop to a6 and now a4 uh, here by, by stockfish maybe with ideas to play a5 and split also the pawn chain here with b takes a5 then uh, black could have really really some weaknesses uh, on the queen side the problem the only problem that white has of course is this queen side pawn majority by black black is of course this three versus two situation so it's somewhere maybe in, in the near future black could have some kind of attack but it's i think simply too slow uh in order to make some kind of a progress on the queen side i think you need like 10 15 moves on the other hand white's attack on the king side we have now of course the pawn majority on the king side is much much faster watch white's attack is much faster we can make already something happen uh, here on the king side so as i said uh, black's attack can happen but it's in my opinion simply too slow so here after move of a4 we have bishop to c4 and now h4 again with ideas maybe to play h5 and now comes i think one of the most critical moments of uh, this game here lila c0 played this move uh, rook to f8 again in my opinion maybe bishop to d5 would be much much better to finally get rid of this annoying bishop on f3 get rid of this very annoying bishop that could come to e4 and as we said simply attack here uh the king side so it was maybe now time to release the pressure a little bit here for black bishop to d5 it's also the suggested move by my stockfish engine at home bishop to d5 uh here after move knight to e4 here maybe knight to e8 which are uh, this move would control of course both of the squares so we're waiting now uh white can never really jump here on d6 or f6 these are of course also weaknesses so with the move knight to e8 i think black would solve all of the position problems still white is slightly better but i simply like more this line because it seems to me that at least now uh black has defended but in the continuation rook to f8 was played the uh, seemingly a good defensive move but it's simply too passive because here after move rook to d4 stockfish breaks and enters so it's really now a six six tactic here a brilliant attack by stockfish stockfish sacrifices the rook for the exchange after move uh, c takes d4 now comes b3 with ideas to play bishop to a3 and now uh here this x-ray attack against the queen but also attacking the rook so if you take this wasn't played in the game bishop to b3 wasn't played in the game you get simply this idea bishop to a3 queen to d7 has to be played or something else but still you get kicked away you have to play queen to d8 bishop takes f8 queen to f8 and now with queen to b2 that would be now the main problem the bishop is hanging but also the pawn is hanging so here in the continuation you could maybe try um queen to c5 but now rook to c1 you play maybe queen to b4 but now bishop to b5 would be a brilliant move now with ideas to play rook to b1 and even if you take uh here uh, a takes b5 can be played queen to b5 but now rook to c7 very very dangerous now uh this attack on the seventh rank with the support of the knight is simply too much to handle and uh black is simply tactical loss the queen will get into the game maybe we can build also battery on uh, on the seventh rank so as i said the activity of white piece is much much better the engine gives here already a plus four evaluation here for for white so after move b3 uh lila c0 realized that this tactical problems played now finally bishop to d5 but it's a little bit too late because now bishop to a3 anyway uh queen to d7 bishop takes rook takes we have now h5 you see now it's possible to finally open the position we have uh g takes h5 rook to d1 bishop to f3 queen takes f3 h4 we have g takes h4 and okay the material is equal uh black managed also to split the pawn chain at least uh white doesn't have now this powerful three uh, connected pawns on the king side but again we can notice that these two pawns are not connected so that's the main issue uh these two pawns are connected when you watch the pawn structure uh white's 
pawn structure is much healthier and the most important thing that also black's king is much much more in danger so these are the two weaknesses in black's camp so the endangered king but also this pawn structure that is split so these two pawns are not connected so it's now a simple target here for uh, for stockfish uh, here in the continuation we have king to h8 rook to d2 we have b5 a5 passing through a6 rook to d1 queen to uh, e7 and now really good move here again rook to d4 taking because even if you try something i don't know maybe something like rook to d8 then you get simply queen to h5 and the problem is now let's see a possible move queen to uh, rook to f8 the problem is always this deflection idea rook takes a d4 if you take then you get checkmated so uh, that's the main issue as i said the weak pawn and the endangered king position so that's why after move rook to d1 uh, lila c0 escape but stock which simply took rook takes d4 knight to d5 king to g2 b4 knight takes e6 we have queen to e6 and now of course rook takes d5 and again stockfish grabbed another pawn this is now a completely completely winning end game here for white even if you try rook to f4 then we simply play of course uh rook to d uh, rook to d8 we have this intermediate check so it's um, not good here maybe to try to deflect the queen from from the defense of the rook so here uh queen to g6 a check uh king to h1 queen to f5 uh here uh stock for simply proceeds with h5 queen to f5 the king march now of course we want to trade off queens when the queens are off the board this would be then a simple rook and a pawn endgame in which of course white is much much better queen to f5 we have queen to uh, e2 again queen to e6 and now stockfish took another pawn we have a couple of checks here by lila c0 but then the problem here stockfish found a great path how to escape from checks here stockfish simply played king to f5 rook to f8 king to e6 queen to h4 now simply getting even the rook uh, the king like this no checks are possible really really wild stuff great calculations by stockfish look where stockfish went with the king no checks by uh, black are possible lila c0 tried queen to d8 now we have this one queen to b7 rook to f8 king to e6 and now uh, we have queen to d3 but now with rook to d7 queen to f5 again stockfish finds new opportunities to escape the problem is now of course you cannot take uh, queen to f4 because you get simply this one and then rook queen to g7 would be a checkmate so really really beautiful tactics beautiful endgame tactics here after move king to d6 we have now uh, rook to e8 b4 we have h6 king to c7 now queen to d5 we have queen to b4 even if you try queen to e5 it's not even better because queen takes e5 uh, rook takes e5 and then with rook to d6 both of these pawns are hanging even if you try maybe something like this we'll play simply this one and even if you take out this one then rook to a6 and we have now two connected pass pawns which are simply winning here for white so queen to d5 as said we have uh, queen to b4 we have now a brilliant move by uh, by stockfish queen to rook to h7 king to h7 but now uh, this beautiful check here again trading uh, some more pieces and now after queen to g6 king to h8 queen to d6 uh, black is pretty much forced now uh, to trade off some more pieces because here queen to c3 was played but now king to d7 a couple of checks again and now queen to h6 queen to g5 king to f6 now simply pushing the pawn further okay you can play some checks but never perpetuals that's the most important thing and here queen to g5 was played by lila c0 sort of a funny move after king to g5 king to g7 e7 uh, king to f7 uh, we have now the promotion of the rook king to g7 and queen to g6 was the checkmate which means of course that stockfish is the winner of the tcec cup final so uh brilliant brilliant game but as i said i really didn't like the fact that this two engines only played four games uh, also the spray range king's indian it's a sharp variation in it which i think uh, stockfish is much much better in the sharper games when it comes to this uh, positional slow games lila c0 is at least uh, equal like stockfish as i said they should have let the engine also play a couple more games like this so uh okay still stockfish is of course probably the best engine in the world but uh, i wasn't really happy when i saw uh, the pre-arranged openings that they had to play in only four games in the super 
super event so okay uh, i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot uh, it was also a beautiful beautiful tactical game with this brilliant exchange sacrifice on d4 if you want to see more games uh, played by stockfish lucy zero in some other uh, beautiful and brutal chess games check out my comment the chess games played by computers here's the link of our series and if you want to see maybe uh, some human games their best games uh, you can also check out my uh, bad chess games of all time series with some great games from the past and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course